Hi, I'm Mr. Zorn, and this is the Stoichiometry Lab. In this lab, we're going to be looking at the thermal decomposition of sodium bicarbonate. Your objective in this lab is to heat sodium bicarbonate, that's the thermal part, and to figure out which of the four given chemical reactions is correct. All right, my first step is going to be to measure out a mass of sodium bicarbonate. You decide which mass is appropriate. So I'm going to go ahead and put my weigh boat on the balance here and I'm going to press the zero button. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and scoop out an amount of sodium bicarbonate. And again, the mass is for you to determine. I've got my mass on there. So we're going to be working with a crucible. This is the container that we're going to be heating with the Bunsen burner. Uh, the crucible is a porcelain container to withstand high temperatures. And what we want to do first is we want to go ahead and take a paper towel over the sink and wipe out any residue on the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and do that over the sink. Get it as clean as possible. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and zero out my balance and place both the crucible and the lid on the balance to get a measurement. So I've got my mass of the crucible. Yours is going to be different. All right, my next step is to transfer the sodium bicarbonate to the crucible and record that mass. Okay, and again, I'm going to take the mass with the lid. So this is the entire container and the sodium bicarbonate. So how would I get the mass of just the sodium bicarbonate? We did take a mass earlier, but you know sometimes we get some residue that's left over in the container. We want to be as accurate as possible when we take our measurements. So if I've got the mass of the sodium bicarbonate and the container, and then I have the mass of the empty container, how would I get the mass of just the sodium bicarbonate by itself? So we are going to be using the Bunsen burner, and our first step anytime we're working with the Bunsen burner is to inspect the hose to make sure that there aren't any cracks that could lead to leaks, which would lead to fires, and I would probably get fired if I burned the lab down. So we want to make sure that we're uh, being safe here. So I don't see any cracks. I'm going to go ahead and plug this into the gas jet here, making sure I have a good snug fit. All right, we are good to go. All right, my next step is to take our clay triangle here. And we're going to place this on top of the ring. This is going to give us an area to place our crucible like that. And then we're going to go ahead and tilt the lid slightly so any gas can escape during the, uh, the lab. All right, our next step is to take our Bunsen burner and we're going to place this underneath. Okay? You want to have this about, I don't know, two, three inches away from the crucible so that it's not directly in the flame and it's not too far away. So about two or three inches is a sweet spot. So my next step is to go ahead and light the Bunsen burner. I'm going to turn the gas on at the valve and light it with the striker. Now you want your flame to be just touching the crucible here. If you notice your flame is not quite there, go ahead and turn it up with the gas valve. We're going to continue heating this for a couple minutes. We want to make sure that we have a complete thermal decomposition. So anywhere between five and 10 minutes is usually enough. Now when we're done heating this, we're going to go ahead and turn it off at the gas shutoff valve. Don't blow it out like a birthday candle. We can't tell the difference between a cool crucible and a hot crucible. So we're just going to assume that this is hot. We're going to give it a couple minutes to cool down. Uh, probably five minutes is enough time for it to cool down. Uh, but when you do go to check it, be careful. When it's time to remove the crucible from the ring stand here, we're going to use our crucible tongs. Do not use your fingers. We're going to gently take our lid off with the crucible tongs and place it off to the side. And then we're going to gently remove the crucible using the crucible tongs and place it off to the side. Our last step is going to be to get a mass of our crucible. Don't want to mass the crucible out until it's had sufficient time to cool. If you bring your hand close to the crucible and it's still radiating heat, you want to give it some more time to cool. If you can bring your hand close and you don't feel anything, give it a couple quick taps with your finger to see if it's still warm. All right? And then once you realize that it is cool to the touch or maybe a little warm but not hot, go ahead and take it over to the balance. I'm going to zero this out and then get a mass. Now, when I mass it out the second time, this is the mass of my crucible and the product, the solid product. So we have a mass of our reactant, the sodium bicarbonate, 
and the crucible, right? We have a mass of the empty crucible. You should be able to isolate just the sodium bicarbonate by itself. All right, let's take a look at the actual lab handout. The lab handout begins with a brief introduction of conservation of mass and stoichiometry. If you scroll down a little bit further, you will see a section labeled your task, and this is what we want to look at. There are four different uh, chemical equations for the reaction for the thermal decomposition of sodium bicarbonate, and we want to correctly identify which of these four is most correct based on the results of the lab. So for each of the four uh, chemical equations, we have a solid on the reactant side, that is our sodium bicarbonate, our baking soda. And then on the right side of each of these four equations, we have a solid product. And if you remember in the lab, we did end up with a solid in our crucible when we finished heating. Um, now, if you look in each of the equations, we have a solid and then we also have um, either one or two gas products. Okay, we have um, no way of measuring these in the lab with the equipment that we have. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and ignore those for the purposes of our stoichiometry. So we're just looking at the product and the reactant. And we have a mass that we started with and we have a mass that we ended with. We should be able to use stoichiometry to figure out a theoretical yield. So taking our grams that we began with and finding out how many grams should we have gotten when we ran this reaction. And then when we actually ran the reaction, we measured a mass. And we're going to evaluate each of these four chemical reactions using a percent yield. So we're going to take our actual over our theoretical and multiply that value by 100. And that will give us our percent yield. Now, using that percent yield, we are going to take a look at each of these equations to determine which one of these is most likely to be the correct reaction. And your job in the lab is to not only identify which one is correct, but be able to explain how you know using stoichiometry and the percent yield. Good luck and have fun.